Good morning to all, especially to our ASEAN Energy Ministers, partners of the Ministry of Economic, Trade and Industry of Japan, colleagues, our distinguished panelists and participants. I'm delighted to be speaking at this third East Asia Energy Forum and I thank Area and Vietnam for organizing this, in, this important forum on carbon capture, utilization and storage and carbon recycling in ASEAN and East Asia. Similar to the rest of the world, ASEAN is hard at work searching for viable and multiple pathway to secure its energy needs. At the same time, ensuring our transition to sustainable energy development and contributing to the global collective of lowering carbon emissions. Put simply, there are generally two ways to reduce future carbon emission from the energy sector. The first option is by transitioning to zero or near zero renewable energy such as solar, wind, hydro geothermal, nuclear power and hybrid technologies in between. This is by now well accepted and is now integrated to most energy development programs whether national or regional. ASEAN itself has clear regional targets for this, such as the 23% renewal target in the ASEAN energy mix and the 30% energy intensity reduction target by 2025 under the ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation. Of course, both the renewal and high efficiency energy pathway have promise and challenges, especially developing in a diverse developing region such as ASEAN. The second option is by adopting energy efficiency measures that lessen or even avoid energy use throughout the energy production and consumption change, which is a subject of today's forum. As you know, ASEAN has set its targets towards deploying more and more low carbon energy in the region. And the ASEAN Energy Ministers has been one in providing this direction in shaping the futures of energy cooperation in the region. At the same time, there is no denying that the ASEAN region will continue to depend on the fossil fuel to meet its energy security and accessibility goal and to power its economic growth in the immediate future. Even as we acknowledge and work towards the energy transition that will in inevitably be upon us and the rest of the world, the speed and the cost trajectory for getting there remains uncertain. More than 70% of the ASEAN region's energy needs will, in the meantime, continue to be secure from fossil fuel in the next decades or so. And because of this, it is important to be realistic and for ASEAN to take advantage of opportunity to mitigate emission from our current ways of meeting our energy needs. This is important and I thank Area and Vietnam for bringing this point to the fore in today's forum and for helping the regions dive deeper into the options available for it. I believe that our, ma our manner of security ASEAN's ongoing energy requirement needs to benefit from such technology such as the application of CCUS and 
carbon recycling technologies that you are about to discuss here today. I understand that this forum will not only tackle CCUS applications for the larger power generation facilities, but will also cover potential application for road transport vehicles, all emerging and potentially viable technologies that could help bridge us towards a more sustainable energy future. I'm also pleased to note that last year's the second energy East Asian Energy Forum tackle renewable energy, particularly the integration of variable renewable energies into electrical grid system, promoting the massive deployment of renewable and renewals and of emission mitigating technologies such as CCUS and carbon recycling will need the support of governments and international and regional cooperation to make them viable. I hope that very soon we will see you work translated concrete initiative under the EAS and ASEAN Energy Cooperation Platform and that this technology will help form basic elements of our sustainable energy future. I wish you and most successful forum today as you build upon last year's work. All my very best wishes and thank you very much.